Hello, good morning everyone. Welcome to Group Exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries at Hanover Messe 2014. Uh, today we will be discussing update on large scale PEM electrolyzer technology. Um, I will be speaking with Managing Director of Hydrogenics Gambeha. Please welcome to the stage Dr. Pichek. Hi, welcome. welcome. So <coughs> perhaps we can start with giving uh, some of the people in the audience here who may not have been here last year with any new um, updates, um, a bit of overview of hydrogenics and any new products or technology involvements that you're doing this year. Yes. Uh, hydrogenics is involved in three main business segments. One segment is fuel cells that we focus on stationary applications as well as on mobility and they are namely on heavy mobility like buses and trucks. Uh, second part is on-site generation hydrogen production typically for the industry where customers need hydrogen for the production process. Uh, we are also involved in hydrogen fueling stations in 2004 we have updated and built up to 50 fueling stations worldwide and the third leg we are focusing on is energy storage and that is particular what we are talking about here this morning energy storage large-scale energy storage multi-megawatt systems based on PEM electrolyzer technologies so would you say that uh, PEM electrolyzer technology is one of hydrogenics uh, main main focus currently when we're talking about large-scale electrolysis yeah PEM electrolysis is the main focus it offers several advantages uh, the major advantage is the compact uh, uh, design of a PEM electrolyzer stack. And I heartily invite you to come over to our booth, which, which is next year to the stage, where we show the first single megawatt stack, uh, as far as I know, which is available on the market. There is one single stack taking up one megawatt of electricity, and that is the core which we will use to set up multi-megawatt systems, can, which can be used in the energy storage market. Okay. So in terms of the energy storage market, uh, can you maybe go into a little bit of detail of some projects that you're involved in? I know that there's been a lot of recent news with E.ON in terms of power to gas projects, which I am aware is one of the market applications of this large scale PEM electrolyzer. Can you maybe share with the audience a little more detail about that? Yeah, as far as I know, we have so far 30 um, energy storage projects in Europe. Uh, Hydrogenics is involved in eight of them and five are in the megawatt class or large-scale electrolyzers. And in particular, there are two projects wh which we can mention here today. Both are with E.ON. Uh, there is Falkenhagen in Brandenburg, an E.ON plant where we operate a two megawatt electrolyzer and we inject the hydrogen into the Ontras uh, natural gas pipeline. And E.ON and its partner Swiss Gas is selling the wind gas to customers that was uh, inaugurated last year in August, so it's in full operation. And the second project, it's in preparation, it will be delivered, shipped this year. It goes to Hamburg Reitbrook and that will be a one megawatt PEM electrolyzer unit uh, supplying hydrogen to the city grid of Hamburg. And that is not in operation yet, but sent to be this year, is that correct? It will be shipped this year, we are, have started to build the unit. Um, so in terms of the project, you said that you went a little bit more de uh, detail in terms of the power output. Is there any other differential parts between the two product project projects that we should be aware of that, that separates the two? Of course, a basic principle, but I don't want to uh, go into the technical details what makes a difference between an alkaline and a PEM electrolyzer. We can discuss that offside uh, if someone is interested in. But the main point beside uh, the compact design is that you can run it on a much higher current density. Current density is, of course, uh, a measure for the density of the stack itself. So an alkaline uh, stack is typically operated at 0 0.5, 0 0.5 amps per square centimeter. And a uh, PEM electrolyzer has a nominal point roughly around 2 amps per square centimeters and it can go up to multiple of these. Uh, we have tested them up to 10 amps per square centimeter uh, and you have a very flat uh, shape of the efficiency curve which helps you also with the total power output of the system. Okay, so how do these projects benefit the regional areas that are already utilizing renewable energy technology? <coughs> That's a very interesting point, which is still in discussion. Um, but from our point of view, 
it is more obvious uh, these days than it ever was before that we need energy storage, that uh, the add to the grid, what is needed, is not fast enough uh, going forward, and that we today have on, on the high transmission grid already grid knots which are overloaded when it comes to uh, strong wind and uh, strong renewable input into the grids, as well as we see the effects also on the other lower levels in the national grid, also down to the distribution level, where we see a lot of PV from private households coming up into the, into the grids, which have to be transmitted to the, to the higher voltage uh, grids, which is uh, pretty un un unusual because the setup of the, of the grids here is that you go uh, top bottom and not uh, the reverse way. So we need storage, we need storage uh, in different um, sizes, we need uh, short term storage, we need daily storage, but we also need seasonal storage where it makes sense to take electricity which cannot be consumed, cannot be con uh, distributed, we take it, we store it and when we need it we re-electrify it. That is one way when we talk about power to gas. There are other value streams in power to gas, obviously. You can use it for industry, which industry ever uses hydrogen. You can use it for the upcoming infrastructure for the uh, hydrogen cars. Uh, you have uh, then the the ability to store it, to re-electrify it. You can put it into the natural gas grid, so to substitute uh, uh, a natural gas, so you reduce the CO2 footprint. You can combine elect uh, electrolyzers or hydrogen with uh, biogas plants, and you take the CO2 from the biogas plant, and you use it with together uh, with the hydrogen in the methanization process. That shrinks the footprint of a biogas plant by half because 48% roughly is CO2 coming out of a biogas plant if you convert that in, in natural gas, synthetic natural gas by use of hydrogen with the same amount of greens going into that biogas plant, you double the output. So there are a lot of uh, um, incentives you can, you can play with. So in terms of the technology you mentioned, different market applications, um, the hydrogen storage, especially in terms of intermittent en energy and dealing with off-peak energy f for the hydrogen storage um, to, power, to power the, the wind turbines. What do you see um, the foreseeable future looking like in terms of this technology, in terms of hydrogenics uh, partnerships and uh, pro project? That's not that easy to answer because you, you can imagine you can have uh, several answers to that question. It depends a bit on what you believe the energy system in future will look like. Will it be a, a more centralized um, a generation system as it is uh, today where you have big or large areas of, uh, of uh, electricity production or will it more decentralized? Whatever you believe, you will come to a different size of equipment needed to support this infrastructure. Um, I think with the electrolyzer technology, especially with PEM, we are best suited for both scenarios. You can easily imagine 20, 40 megawatt installation, which are more focusing on a decentralized electricity production, and you can go to larger systems, 100 megawatt and even bigger, if it comes to really to the point where a wind farm offshore lands on and you want to have something in addition to the electricity connection. But this is at the moment unclear. We also have to understand that some regulations need to be adjusted to make systems um, more profitable in operation as they could be today. But this is an ongoing process and first steps will be undertaken before the summer period starts. Okay, so in terms of these types of projects, um, how does hydrogenics work with clients in terms of, and customers in terms of these integration sy for these systems? It depends on the customer. We offer whatever he wants. So there is the basic line is a single uh, turnkey solution, which he can simply integrate, and then it goes all the way uh, towards uh, common development projects according to his needs, where we define new projects in uh, support the customer in all levels of engineering and approval processes depending on what he really wants from us. Perfect. Okay, at this time I'm going to open the floor to the audience. Does anyone in the audience have any questions for Dr. Pitchek? Anyone? Okay. Well, I think that that brings the end of all my questions for you today. Um, thank you so much for coming to stage. Um, if anyone has any further questions, if you think of anything else you would like to discuss, please visit Hydrogenics at booth C59. It's actually right behind the stage. Uh, nice, conveniently located. Um, 
thank you so much for coming today. Um, I look forward to speaking with you later. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Okay.